Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about how being forgiven of little equals loving little, but being forgiven of much leads to loving much. And so this is a passage of scripture that Jesus speaks when he's talking about Mary Magdalene. Over the last couple of days, we've talked about Mary Magdalene, how she broke the expensive jar of perfume. She poured it onto the body of Jesus. The disciples were giving her a hard time about it, saying it could have been sold for a year's worth of wages and the money given to the poor. But Jesus told them to leave her alone. He said she had done a beautiful thing for him. And then I find it very interesting that when Jesus raises from the dead, Mary Magdalene's the first one to see him. She's the first one that he appears to when he rises from the dead. And we're going to continue this story about her today, looking at this passage of scripture from one of the other gospels, where Jesus says she's been forgiven of much, and that's why she loves much. So let's take a look at the scripture. This is Luke chapter 7, verses 37 through 47. It says, a woman in that town, talking about Mary Magdalene, who had lived a sinful life, learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this woman were a, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she's a sinner. But Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You've judged correctly, Jesus said. And then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. So it's this interesting connection here. She's shown that she'd been forgiven of much because of her great love. But whoever's been forgiven little, loves little. And so we're going to ask God today. We're going to pray and ask God to help us to understand this. To help us to understand how much we've been forgiven of. So that our love is great. And he helps us to walk in this from this point on in our lives. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for this passage of Scripture. And we're grateful for the forgiveness that we have because of Jesus in Christ. And we're asking you to help us to see how much we've been forgiven. And to receive that forgiveness, to walk in it, so that we love greatly. It flows through us to other people. We're going to take communion over this. Jesus said, as often as you do this, as you take communion, to remember him. The Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. And in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all the benefits of this new covenant. It sets them in motion. So as we take communion today, we're believing we receive this today. We're being forgiven of much so that we love much. But it's also important we take communion the right way. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. And that's why so many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you fallen asleep. 
But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we're judged in this way by the Lord, we're being disciplined so that we will not finally be condemned with the world. So let's take a moment to examine ourselves. Let's start with, what are the ways that you walked in the light today? We can walk in the light. Every moment of every day, we have this opportunity to walk in the light as God is in the light. Symptoms of that, we're resting in our soul. We're putting God first. Being open and honest and transparent, present and full of joy. Walking in love, kind and patient and gentle. Always assuming the best, keeping no record of wrongs. Delighting in the truth, always hoping, always trusting, always persevering. Because love never fails. Ways that we responded with faith and belief and positivity, even in the face of adversities. Ways that we took action, we kept persevering, we kept going. We gave ourselves or other people grace and forgiveness, just like God's done for us. We brought our best. We didn't just go through the motions. And then in contrast to this, we've all got buttons that can be pushed in our life, emotional buttons, buttons in our heart. They want to re make us respond in maybe not the most graceful way. To lose our positioning in the light. Symptoms of that. Be broken fellowship with God or people. We've got a strain in the relationship. Maybe we're snapping at people who got stress or frustration, heaviness, pressure. Maybe we're lacking self-control, responding in a harsh or angry way. Feeling depressed or down, complaining, venting, pouting. Toiling away in our mind, rolling the problems over and over in our mind. Prioritizing money and stuff over people. Maybe we retaliate at people or give them the silent treatment or avoid them. Maybe we're focused on lack. Not enough time, not enough resources, not enough money. When God's more than enough. And when we're out of position, we feel unfulfilled, like something's missing. Because in the light, there's fullness in Christ. And so we're going to bring these buttons to God today. Asking him for help to reprogram these buttons. So Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that every moment of every day, we get the opportunity to walk in the light with you. And we ask you to forgive us of any ways maybe we responded in not the most graceful way. We're going to forgive ourselves. We're going to walk in forgiveness with other people. And I thank you that what you put within us is more than enough to handle whatever's coming at us in a beautiful, graceful way. And I ask you to help us to grow and to cultivate what you put within us. So that those things that used to push our buttons, we respond to them in a beautiful, graceful way. And we thank you that the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We'd all missed it. We'd all turned to our own ways. And God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed. He was destroyed. He was smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in God's sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him in his right hand. And he raised us up together with him. And made us sit together with him in heavenly places. And communion is a celebration of our union with him. Being joined together as one. So, Father, I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us. 
gives us a fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today in a covenant relationship with God. So, Father, I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. All right. Let's talk about some health and fitness stuff. Something we haven't talked about in a little bit. When you are lifting weights, make sure that you grip the weights firmly. The hands are made to secure things. The hands are made to secure things. That's a reminder for us. God's hand, when we're in his hands, we, things are secure. So grip those weights firmly when you hold on to the weights. But I hope there's enough for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.